Hi everyone, it's Leilani. Welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be working on an epic three month um, update in my reading journal. So big deal y'all because honestly I had just kind of tucked my reading journal away, kind of just forgotten about it, and it was something that I really was not that interested in continuing to document in, and I'll tell you, it's mostly because this album is now getting a little difficult to work in. I just really, really wish that my 2022 reading journal section of this Archer and Olive notebook, which I love this notebook, don't get me wrong, but I really wish that I would have used the sticker page paper because uh the fact that I used regular paper it really has bulked up this thing to the extreme and it's a little hard to work out of um and I just kind of put it into the back of my mind and was like eh, I'm not gonna worry about it but I had a couple people tell me that they really did enjoy my reading journal updates and of course that means a lot to me so I thought what the heck let's just bite the bullet let's sit down and let's just knock all of these out so this update you know whenever I update my reading journal it does take a little bit of time because I have to go back into Goodreads where I kind of keep track of all my books and I have to save all the book covers off of, you know, Google Images and then print them off in a variety of different sizes depending on which section I'm adding the, them into. I have to stamp a lot, tally all my pages, do all the things. But we did it and I'm feeling so much better. Let me tell you, I was on a high after I finished this because having, you know, finally being caught up felt amazing. So as I've been chatting, here at the beginning I did already uh, add in the small little book covers of all the books that I read for the year so I added in all the ones from uh, the past three months so we're going to be working on March April and May in this video then the second uh, pages there I chose my favorite books from each month and then also on this one this is my book shelfie so I go in and I'm coloring the books depending if they were a five a four a three a two or a one star read and then I add in the uh, the book titles of course so I'm just kind of like going through adding all of these in here and then we will move on to like the monthly pages so I finally did have my first two star read of the year so so far the blues have been fives the yellow um, the pinks are the fours and the yellows are the threes. So a lot of threes. Um, I do read a ton of cozies and a lot of times those those get the threes. But I did have my first two star and it was, no shock here, one of the Joanne Fluke books. And y'all, I could make an entire like vlog video, like a real booktuber, just all about these Joanne Fluke books. Um, Joanne Fluke writes a series of cozy mysteries, which I've mentioned over here many, many times, um, called the Hannah Swinson mysteries they're all like a uh, bakery based so they're called things like the cinnamon roll murder the devil's food cake murder the chocolate chip cookie murder things like that so I can get them for free at my library and uh, through the Libby app so I listen to them and I'm kind of addicted to them I almost like hate read them but I I do kind of genuinely want to know what happens with these characters but some of the stuff y'all I don't know at this point if Miss Fluke has a, a ghost writer or something, I looked her up and I think she's about 80 years old now. And these books still do come out every year. So I don't know if there's a ghost writer situation or what, but they're getting more and more ridiculous. And <laughs> some of these last ones were truly painful. And let me tell you, if you read these books, or even if you don't, a really good time is to go into Goodreads and to read the one star reviews and there are a lot of them uh on these books and they are hilarious like i had me and my mom rolling on our recent road trip where i was reading these uh, reviews because i always tell my mom about these books and it was just so hilarious how much people like hate them but i think we're all in a general um like agreement that at the beginning they were a lot better there was a lot of kind of it was a different vibe, I guess, because they were written in like the very early 2000s. So some things were maybe not as PC as you would say today, but the general story seemed to be better. Now it just, 
it seems like it's lost a little bit of something. And Hannah is just more and more and more annoying with every book. So I hope that they get better. You know, now I'm kind of just really like stuck in on this story because I'm like 17 books in. So I, I want to know what happens. So I'll keep y'all updated about that. That's kind of my main thing here that I always chat about during these reading journal videos. But I can't help myself. They're just, oh, it's a lot. So now we are moving on to the actual monthly spread. So this part is kind of the main part that takes the longest because I do a lot of stamping. I've got to draw all my boxes in. I've got to outline all the things, all of that. But I do really love when these pages are completed. So I try to stay within the same parameters for each um, month. I might be a little off when I'm drawing my boxes, as y'all know. I try to count count the little uh, grid um Air, what are those called little grid dots and I try to make sure that it's roughly the same size but if I'm wrong I don't worry about it I just kind of move move along so they look good enough for me so I always start with the month stats at the top and then I'll add in my boxes for my total number of reads uh, like books I read during the month also if they were audio uh, ebook or physical which honestly 99% of the things that I read every month are audiobooks I just love an audiobook I like to listen to the book instead of reading it I get so tired trying to like physically read a book and I love multitasking I'm the type of person where I love to have my hands busy so the majority of the time even if I'm watching a show or whatever I'm doing I like to have you know I like to be doing something physically so audiobooks are just perfect for me and I don't think I've read one ebook all year so I really don't even need that as an option but it's there so I just keep adding that zero right in so at the bottom I have my genres once again Again, kind of the same genres for me graphic novels cozy mysteries and thrillers for the most part and then I have my total number of pages at the bottom so for March I did read six books kind of decent because I did not read very many books back in February if you remember I only read four books so that was like a really really low month for me last year I was way more on the ball and I was reading like up to ten books a month like eight ten books I just haven't been quite as um you know gung-ho with my reading as I have been in the past months I hope to get back to that not that there needs to be any particular amount of books read every month but I do really enjoy consuming this form of media so I don't want to forget about it I don't want to not read throughout the month but for this month you'll see that I do have a Joanne Fluke book there I gave it three stars so this one wasn't too bad um clearly that was the cream puff murder I think it, uh, after this one they kind of start going downhill then I also reread um Finley Donovan Knock Some Dead which is the second in the series I gave it five stars again then uh Dial A for Aunties and also Finley Donovan Jumps the Gun which was the newest Finley in the series I gave it four stars I personally still really enjoyed it I know a lot of people had a lot to say about that book and it seemed like a lot of people did not enjoy where the book went by the third um I feel like for me you kind of know what you're getting into with Finley and uh that seems like the path that it would go on honestly and I just love the characters in those books so I don't even care what happens in them I'm a Finley stan and I will be reading every single one of those books that uh that are written so then we move on to April. I'd already done my stamping there while I had my stamps out. So I'm just going to draw my boxes and add on all of my books again. So a lot of this is very much repetition, just kind of like doing the same thing. So for this, I knew I just needed some time to sit down and get it done so it was actually on a Monday whenever I don't typically do a ton of scrapbooking because that's one of Will's days off but I really just kind of got the itch to go in there and work on these spreads and I thought while I'm feeling it I better get in the craft room and do my reading journal because it just had been something like I said that I was kind of just not super excited to work on and that's always hard because of course scrapbooking and memory keeping is fun it's a fun hobby and I want to enjoy what I'm working on and I don't want to dread working on a crafty project and so it felt really good to like want to get in the craft room and document these books 
So for April, you will see that I have two more Joanne Fluke books that I read. Those are The Plum Pudding and Apple Turnover uh, Murders. Also, Blood on the Tracks. I've been still going strong with reading those. So those are a set of graphic novels. They're really disturbing and weird. I'm sure I've mentioned them over here before because I've been reading them for months now. There's a lot in the series. And I was kind of typically picking up about two to three of them every month and trying to read them. I have two more in my home right now uh, that I really should just uh, knock out this month because I've kind of been putting them off. I just kind of forgot about them. But they're super interesting graphic novels. Definitely in like the thriller category. Just about a really weird relationship between a mother and son. But really, really good. And they leave you with a lot of cliffhangers. And of course, they're super, super quick reads. Um, you could probably finish one in 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. So the other books were The Thursday Murder Club and The Writing Retreat. The Writing Retreat was a new book that had come out maybe this month or so, and I was really excited to read it. Um, I thought that it was good. You know, it was a it's a thriller. I thought that it was it was a good book, but it did get a little wild and crazy at the end, which I typically really enjoy, like just a total uh you know, crazy thriller that goes all kinds of insane places and does a lot of unbelievable things. You know, I really do like that. But for this one, it kind of lost me in a couple spots. So I ended up giving it uh, four stars. But I would say that it was maybe like really a three and a half or so. I was a little, uh, you know, generous for me with the uh, with the rating there. So now I'm just adding on all my little stickers. I'm definitely going to need to purchase a few more stickers from Pip Sticks. All of these different ones are from Pips. I love the tiny stars, but they've been out of those on the website for like a while now. And I hate that because I love them for all of my stickering projects. They're just the perfect little size to fill in, you know, all the tiniest spots. Um, but yeah, I love picking up a few Pip Stick stickers to pop in here and there. So I'm definitely going to have to grab a few more because I am running quite low. So at this point, I realized that for the other two months, I did this kind of yellow line here and outlined it. And I really love the way that the line looks. It just kind of finishes it off to me and gives it a little bit of like a border that I really enjoy. So I added those on to these other spreads here really quickly. And I think it, it kind of helped to just keep everything like nice and tight and, and tucked in there together. So kind of a random thing um, for this year for like the design element but I think with working in the Hobonichi and being a little more doodly in that type of a, a notebook I was more inspired to kind of add on little things like that into my reading journal. So now we're doing the same thing for May. We're going to add on the stats. I think I drew this box a little bit too big. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. If it kind of goes a little crazy and it's a little too big or too low or too high, I just kind of go with it. I'm not going to uh, worry about trying to fix any kind of mistakes. I just kind of keep keep it moving. So we're going to draw in all of our boxes and then we will add all of the books in. And I think this is the start of all of the Joanne Fluke kind of downhill books and definitely throughout June I've still been going there um I think I've mentioned before but I feel like me and like maybe one other lady a uh, local lady read these books because I'm always trying to battle with her to get these books from the library like there always seems to be one person I'm waiting in line in front of so I listen to a ton of these throughout May and June because I happened to get a bunch in I had just reserved like a ton of them so I happened to get a bunch of them in so I was trying to like listen 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 while I could because on uh, the Libby app which is like through your library you only get like 21 days to listen to a book which is a long time but at the same time if you check out a bunch of them at once you want to like roll through all of them so there's a lot of those books um, throughout these next couple months so here I read seven, so that's one of the reasons why so many got read. Also, you'll notice at the top we have three more Blood on the Tracks um, graphic novels. So I was definitely going through those a lot during this month as well. And then we have three Joanne Fluke books here. And then also Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers, um, which was definitely my favorite read of the month. I loved that one. It's a cozy and it was super great. It's by the same author. 
as um, Doll A for Aunties, and I really enjoyed Vera Wong. I just loved her as a character. It's definitely a different um, kind of cozy than what we're typically used to. We actually read that one for the book club, and Vera is like a more mature age, so I thought that that was really fun to hear from like a different perspective. It was just a really good book. And at this point, as we move into the Joanne Fluke books, I know the Cinnamon Roll Murder, see, that's the one where I think things started to kind of fly off the rails there, y'all. And then we move on in, and one of those at the bottom, Devil's Food or Red Velvet Cupcake, that got the two star. And unfortunately, there's been a few more two stars since then. And sometimes I'm, I'm like battling with myself if I should give it one. But the reason why I don't is because I'm still intrigued enough to keep listening to the next one and I don't know why that is because I'm telling you sometimes I'm like these are not good but I think that's what keeps me coming back is the fact that they're not good so it's just so funny so I'm adding on my lines here added in all of my rating stickers and of course all of those stickers that do like the five star ratings those are linked below as well if you want to grab those for yourself they are from an Etsy shop and I really love them. They're a great size, and I just love how I don't have to stamp on anything, and I don't have to color in any stars, and I just really, really like them a lot. So adding on my few stickers here and there, I love those little people with the books and the bookmarks, but I'm pretty much out of both of them, so I'm definitely going to have to purchase more. So now here for the end, we always go back to the back of the um, book here, and we're going to add on the Cozy Mystery Book Club picks. So for March, we had Dial A for Aunties. That one was a really cute story um, about, obviously, a family. There was a young niece or daughter, and then all of the aunties that helped her cover up a murder. It's quite funny and uh, was a good story. It wasn't my ultimate favorite. Like, I don't have a huge... Um, interest in like continuing with that particular uh, cozy story but it was a, a fun one for that month so here I'm going to add on my large photo so for this year I kind of decided to do the cozy mysteries a little bit different um, last year if you remember I actually took a selfie every month with the book and I did really like that I thought that it was cute but this month I decided to just do a large um a cover of the book so I printed these off I think they're actually like three and a half by four and a half or something like that they're quite big so I kind of print them off almost as like a big movie poster kind of thing a big book poster um, and then I can talk about whatever it is you know about the book so then on this same side with that photo I stamp out the month again so I'll stamp out the word March for this one I'll add on a couple boxes at the bottom and honestly the boxes are just for cuteness sake, I'm really, I'm not um, writing about two separate things in those boxes. I'm just in general writing about my thoughts and feelings about the book, how much I enjoyed it, uh, how good the book club meeting was, you know, if people seem to enjoy the book as well, um, if I would continue with the series, all that kind of stuff. I'll just pop those into these two boxes here. I just think it looks cuter having the boxes and having the little, um, circle stamps that kind of bring in that continuity from the monthly spreads. I just think that it looks better than just like writing a paragraph of words. So just just for cuteness. And then on the right side, I always do a like little questionnaire thingy over on my Patreon so that you can kind of prepare for the book club meeting and then I go by those questions as we have our meeting and we discuss everything. So I typically always print those off and then I will just like quickly fill out all the questions and I'll add those in to the right side of the spread as well. So that works out for me. I kind of added in those same little lines coming off the top and I think they're really cute. It just gives it a little pop of something. Um, I really love the way all the colors worked here with the um with the March spread they don't always work out that perfectly but I really like the way that this one came together so you can see this is in general how it's going to look I will add a little piece of washi tape at the top just for cuteness 
and there you have it. So then we'll move on to um, April and May. So for April, we read the Thursday Murder Club. And I remember this meeting being really fun. We had a lot of people that came out and read this book. There was a lot of thoughts and feelings about it, which I loved. Some people really loved the book, gave it five stars, moved on to the second one, which is always wonderful to see. And then some people I could tell it really wasn't their cup of, their cup of tea. I feel like I was right in the middle. So I did enjoy the story and I loved the characters from the Thursday Murder Club. It is also a story, um, a cozy mystery where your main characters are of a certain age, which was really fun. They were a super cute um, cast of characters. But at the same time, it was a different writing style than I was in particular like used to and was a little complex for me personally. So I'm not, I'm not sure yet if I would pick up another one in the series, but I've already had a couple people tell me that the second one is really, really good. So it is something I'm considering. Um, but I love, that's one thing I love about the, um, book club. There's, we are always reading cozy mysteries, so they are a similar style, but it's fun to kind of compare and contrast and do all the things with them and, and see what, which kind of vibe is your favorite. So then we're moving on into May with Vera Wong. Like I already said, I loved this book. It was really cute. Like one of my favorites so far. Definitely besides Finley, we did reread Finley Donovan is Killing It, um, which is one of my all-time favorite books. We read that in February. So of course that is my favorite. But um, besides Finley, this was my second fave of the year. I just really loved it. And this was a newer release, so I'm not sure if there's going to be a second one, but I would totally pick up the second one if so. Um, and of course, a part of me does hope that there is, but another part of me thought this one was just a really good standalone as well. So I also wouldn't be mad if, if we just had that one. So we'll have to see what ends up happening there. So now I'm going to add on all of my journaling. Throughout a lot of this, I kind of batched it and worked um, like a little bit on one month and a little bit on the next month just as I was stamping or working on different things like that. But let me tell you guys, whenever I finish this, I was literally on top of the world. Like I felt so good about myself. Um, I really couldn't believe that I went in there and knocked this whole thing out. I mean, I was probably working on this video a good two hours from start to finish with printing everything and filling out these little questionnaires here. I had some of the questions kind of um, scribbled out on some of my scratch paper from the meeting, but I didn't have it all filled out nicely. So I had to go through and do all of it. And it was a lot, but it felt great. So here I'm just going to kind of go through and show you everything that we filled in today. I'm so happy that I am going to finish this reading journal for the year. Um, next year, I can always kind of try to figure it out, change it up, whatever. But I am really, really glad to have these months filled in. And I'm going to try my best to not get past like two months because three was a little too much to do in one video. But anyways, y'all, that's the end. I hope you enjoyed it. Give me a like and um, I will, of course, talk to you next time. Bye, y'all.